Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service and joining us today, two more people to talk about the augmented reality sandbox. It's Alana Velaji. She's a University of Alaska Fairbanks mechanical engineering student, helped design and work on the details to make this new type of sandbox there. Thanks for joining us, Alana. <laughs> and Courtney Brees, she's the outreach coordinator for EPSCOR, which is the experimental program to stimulate competitive research. It's a, a program funded nationally by the National Science Foundation, right? Yes. Okay. Alana, tell us about how you changed and adapted this version of the augmented reality sandbox. It's a really cool tool. So, Gina approached us with three goals for this new version of the sandbox. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be compact mm -hmm. in a light system that could travel around the state. Mm -hmm. They wanted it to be child oriented. Okay. So we designed the sandbox to have three different levels. Okay. It's pretty cool. You can yeah. have younger children. You can have high school kids. Uh -huh. um, I guess I should say high school teenagers. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then we also designed it to be more marketable, user friendly, so that this could be seen eventually in classrooms all over the place, all over the state. Okay, and you had a big hand in this, but this was a team approach, right? Definitely. It was a really good experience for myself, for George Stevens, who we'll see later. One of our hand models today. Yeah. For um, two other members who aren't here today, Cody Klingman and Austin Hunt. Uh -huh. And um, it was just a really good learning experience all around. Very good. And this is something that is part of your learning experience as well, so you get to check a box in your education. Yeah, right? it's a requirement for... Um, Seniors of Mechanical Engineering at uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks. Very good, very good. Well, it is a, is a wonderfully uh, inquisitive tool, fun to play with, and I hope to get my hands in the sand here in just a little bit. But it's also part of a bigger program, something that we were talking about a moment ago, EPSCOR, and that's what Courtney is here uh, to tell us more about. What is EPSCOR and why do you need a sandbox? Well, EPSCOR, as you mentioned, is a national uh, program. Mm -hmm. We're funded nationally, but we're actually located statewide. We're at UAF, we're mm -hmm. at UAA, we're in Southeast at UAS. And she mentioned, you know, taking the sandbox as an educational tool. And that's where our, I'm an outreach coordinator for the South Central test case. Okay. Our focus is on the Kenai watershed. Mm -hmm. And we are really interested in using these tools like the sandbox to interact with the students down there and get them interested in STEM, and also communicate the research findings that we've been having throughout the state. Okay. And one of those, as uh, George and Eric are kind of changing the contours for us there from UAF to uh, maybe something that <laughs> resembles a little bit of something uh, more of the Kenai watershed, which is one of your focuses for the study, right? And, and specifically looking at some of the changes there and how that impacts people and also the salmon. Yes, it is a, all of our research is social mm -hmm. and environmental. Okay. So we have social scientists working hand in hand with our environmental scientists. One of the things we're studying is Upper Russian Lake mm -hmm. and we have a researcher taking sediment cores from that lake. So one of the things we're going to use the sandbox to communicate is how the landscape changed over a long period of time, thousands of years, going from glacier covered by glacier ice mm -hmm. to being filled with water and then... And that's what they're doing right now. Exactly. So live. they're <laughs> Exactly. That's so they're so moving cool. the water around. And then I think they've got some props over there because we're also going to go a little bit more in depth and explain how the salmon got there. Okay. So using there's these. There's the salmon. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I think there's a few more. <laughs> yeah, we so. like more salmon in Alaska. More salmon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's really taking the findings from our research grant and just trying to connect with the community and translate it in a really hands on and mm -hmm. exciting way so people can you know, interact with us as much as possible. Well, sure, that, that makes the learning and the science real and, and quite literally in your face rather than just some boring black and white paper that you have to read about. This is something that people can understand better because it's visual and they're touching and feeling and seeing these changes, right? Yeah, and get them engaged. And then mm -hmm. outreach is a huge component and working with the younger students and actually even, I mean, working with the UAF graduate mm -hmm. and uh, engineering students is it's a huge part of our grant and our we really enjoy it. Oh, it is wonderfully exciting. And so, Alana, you were telling us that this is built to travel. Right. And this is built to do more things in version one. Where can this type of project go in Alaska? And what can it demonstrate? I mean, we were hoping to eventually get to villages that were harder to reach, mm -hmm. um, that you couldn't necessarily move a whole fixed instrument to, right? right. You need something that can pack up, fit in your truck bed. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, one of the, the most attractive parts of this project is that 
this was going to be something that was used past our, our graduation point. You know, this okay. is going to be something that lives in the state for years. Right, right. Well, it looks like you're well on your way with that. So what are, uh, give me another example. What else can this show us? We've talked about the, the Kenai River watershed. What's the coolest thing that you've played in the sand with? What, what's your idea? Well, I definitely enjoy the props, but we also like kind of building up a giant mound. And uh, if you put some water behind it, you can make a, a little... Uh, runway, I guess, and okay. you know, demonstrate the effects of the hydrology by just letting, kind of putting up a dam and letting it all pour right down. Okay. And so that could, I think you mentioned it earlier, you could even demonstrate the effects of a tsunami. Right. Or okay. something along those lines. So it's not just topography, but it's also hydrology yes. and coastal surge mapping and some of the coastal changes that we're seeing here in Alaska and seeing what the smaller changes in the sandbox might do to kind of a real effect of a slosh or a push of water up on the coast. Mm -hmm. uh, tsunami inundation mapping or even glacial dam release as, as some of uh, has been demonstrated before. Yep. So, oh, wow, that's, you know, that's just an impressive thing. That it seems like the possibilities are nearly endless with this and probably even more ideas that are popping up in your head too. Yeah, as we speak. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Well, if folks want to get more information about EPSCOR, uh, you guys are online. You're on Facebook, Twitter, and on YouTube. Uh, A-K-E-P-S-C-O-R, right? EPSCOR. Uh, Alaska EPSCOR, that is. Mm -hmm. And again, you guys are funded by the National Science Foundation. Yes, so more to come from that and a, and a longer term study there. Thank you, ladies, uh, for joining us today. Uh, congratulations on your hard work there. This is really fun. And uh, for now, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder uh, with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts, and I'm going to go play in the sandbox there. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.